Hello, Dennis. David, how are you today? Very well. Thank you for speaking with me. It's all right. Okay, let's talk right about the CD. I got an advanced copy. It's fantastic. You like it? You guys really know how to rock. <laughs> <laughs> I, I especially like Circle Sky. My God, what a way to start off the record. Well, actually, yeah, funny enough, you, we were just talking um, two minutes ago about that number <laughs> because we are uh, put together some ideas, you know, for next year with a... Uh, with the album and with the show, um, obviously the three of us have been going out, but now it's just, you know, sort of great interest uh, because of the album uh, in, in the four of us, and then something that uh, looks like it's going to happen. Really? The four and of you are going to go out, do you think? Yeah, we are, uh, uh, you know, to, to, um, to be able to promote it properly, you know, and mm -hmm. not have to keep explaining where the other man is. <laughs> so uh, we, we sort of like... Um, it and uh, it would be best for the group, best for the album. Um, but uh, we did that, and Circle Sky, we were just visualizing the, the four of us standing up front playing the guitars with the film from the head movie right. playing on the screen, because that's what it all start to incorporate as we, as we go into 1997. We'll be uh, adapting the show um, and trying to, you know, get a little closer to the original concept, which was always you know, Monkeys went out in 1966 and 67. We always had a screen for the film. That was always the, the you know, the Monkeys uh, sort of um, trademark. So, basically, uh, the music has changed somewhat. Um, uh, but it's still got that flavor because obviously we did it. So, therefore, it's going to be sounding like the Monkeys. And uh, hopefully, going to be fitting into the 1997 sort of feel and format. And hopefully, not sort of. Uh, going too far away from those um, those fans that have um, you know big, you know big, big, they've understood us in a certain way and you know what it's like you, you went to the Everly Brothers in concert and all of a sudden they hear three songs from our new album and then when you finish yawning <laughs> you right. want to hear um, you know Peggy Sue right, right. so it's a very difficult transition to make not for the band but for the audience and well, therefore you've got to be considerate of that well, just listening to it, I think you guys did a good job of going into the 90s. Yeah. It has enough of the original monkeys feel, I think, but it's not like in all these book goodies monkeys. Do you know what yeah. I mean? That's the impression I get. Well, that's your impression, and, 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 you know, it's got to, as we always did, we did reach the masses, so to speak, but we always were um, available. You know, the monkeys were never... Um, they were always like the boy next door sort of thing, you know. They were always sort of like, you know, um, approachable. You know, they weren't sort of aloof and, and sort of like Hollywood. You know, they weren't um, sort of, um, you know, big business. We never, you know, you never really associated money. And you only have, uh, 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 you know, you only imagine the monkeys being sort of like the guys next door and, and being regular people. Yeah, so I think although we did, you know, group, different kinds of groups, whether it we did reach a lot of different areas of, of, of audience with individual ideas about what the monkeys were to them, you know, whether it's just somebody comes up to me now and says, you know, bring up your kids, or someone that comes up to me now and says, hey, look, I was a big fan, and now my kids are big fans. Uh, my mother used to say to me, and I'm, so, I'm looking at a 45 year old woman and saying, my mother used to say I couldn't do this. <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden she's saying that her kids like it. It's something they have in common. So hopefully this album will um, you know, draw interest to us in 1997, but I hope it will not sort of um, turn off the people that have, have supported and followed us um, over the years who, who expect much of the same, you know. It's all very well going out there and doing the concerts, and, and there's nothing I enjoy more than getting a reaction when I see Daisy Believer or I Want to Be Free or Valerie or a little bit me, you know, or whatever it is, you know. Um, but the new album is important thing to all. Yeah, with Circle Sky, I couldn't help but think when I heard the lyric, it looks like we've made it once again. It just reminded me, like, hey, we're together again. Exactly. Well, that was the lyric and the song that was written for the head movie back in 1969. It's the only song on the album that, uh, that is brand new. There is, if you have heard the tune before, um, or you, you, you hear the version from Head, Mike has uh, rearranged the, 
the lyrics and the last verse is a little bit more current and a little bit more sort of um, it changed you can change the lyric on it um, yeah, I noticed I have the original, I have the hidden soundtrack. I noticed there's background vocals with you guys in it too, which weren't in the previous version. Yeah, well, you know, it, the monkeys was all about the vocals, really. It was very, very sparse in regards to um, the, the actual instrumentation. And if you listen down to the old song, basically we were, um, you know, a vocal of the band, you know, either one or two voices um, with a minimum of four or five instruments. Um, and that's why it was easy for us and it easy for us to go out because it's not going to be hard for the four of us to, uh, to play the stuff we're doing because we've written it all, we've played it all but it's going to be easy, uh, easier for us to be able to play Last Week's Clarksville and uh, I Want to Be Free and, uh, and Pleasant Valley Sandy and I'm a Believer because it's all based, there's not a lot of, you know, uh, instruments in there other than the basic rhythm section. Yeah, one of the exciting things about listening to the record, Dave, was that you guys are playing the instruments. Well, you see, I think of that too, but you know, I think if you listen to it and you just said this is the monkey and you didn't know we played the instrument, I, it is for you because obviously you followed us and you know about us, you know, uh, 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 you know over the years uh, as the kind of criticism the monkey did get. And it wasn't all about playing the music, you know, you go and watch the Eagles or go watch the Stones, there's three or four other musicians on that stage, you know, playing every time. Right. You know, there's a lot of people that uh, um, uh, it takes to get um, um, a project underway. And, you know, I would very much like to see the Monkeys go out and do a set on their own for 45 minutes. But I would very much like to see Mickey Dolan come from behind the drums and just going down. And I would like very much to see Peter Thor come from behind the piano and do Andy Griselda. You know what I'm saying? It's not much, that much for me because I, I play limited amounts of uh, uh, time on the stage uh, behind the instrument. There's no reason why I can't play the drums on I'm Not Stepping Stone, or I can't play the bass on Last Thing to Clark, so right. or play a guitar on, 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 on uh, you know, one of the new tunes. There's absolutely no reason, you know. I mean, the instrumentation is pretty bass. It's the rhythm section, that's what the monkey's all about. One thing I want to ask you about, what was that feeling the first time you guys went into the studio to make the new record? And here's the four of you looking at each other. Okay, we have to make music now. How did you feel? Were you nervous? Were you um, I think, um, yeah, uh, all those uh, feelings came from different um, boys, you know. I think Mike Nesmond is very confident. He's a very good man in the studio. I, I, if you read the line notes and the things, I, I'm not particularly thrilled with what Mickey Dolan wrote. Um, although he was responsible, you know, I spent the last 25 years being James Jones for months. And without the vehicle, uh, and without the, the you know the, the, the actual foundation uh, um, uh, of, of the monkeys and, and, the, and the feeling people had towards them, we wouldn't have been able to do this anyway. And um, I feel uh, actually uh, uh, as responsible for uh, making this happen as anybody. Uh, just as valuable as making things that uh, Mike Nelson was to the project he was. He's a good producer, and he could brought a lot of ideas to the project. I think I'm the guy that's been flying the flag most over the last 25 years and then it's made this possible. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Davey, I remember you when I used to come up from Cub, Cub Scouts in 1967 and I used to watch you. You know, I mean, I grew up with the monkeys and I followed your career. Mickey's going in and out from the solo thing back and forth, you know, back and forth, back and forth. But I've always been associated with the monkeys and I've always had the pleasure of talking about it, you know, so I find that a little, um, a little uh, Mickey Dolan. Yeah, well, this feel like this. They told a couple of my journalist friends I was interviewing one of the monkeys, and two of them said, well, I hope it's Davey. He's the cool one. Yeah, well, that's very nice. So, so Give him my love. I <laughs> certainly will. Um, the songs on it that you wrote, were any specifically written for the record, or were they ones that were just kind of hanging out? Um, no, they're all brand new tunes. I do have, um, actually, I have written about 12 new tunes over the last year and a half. Um, there are a couple of those particular tunes, like You and I, was a song that Mickey and I wrote for Dolan Joint Force and Heart in 76. Right. Um, but it was a song that was never really done, and it's kind of a song that I've always wanted to do on stage with Mickey, so I pushed that one as being part of the album. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's not too late to turn the ship around. I've just recently been divorced, and um, I was just trying to um, write something about the feeling that I was having at the time, you know. 
Um, and that was basically something that I, I, I actually wrote about, um, you know, my marriage, breakup and everything else. Um, what a Night um, was um, definitely about um, um, an affair that I had. And, um, and um, the, the, the sort of last verse about uh, last we back together, that never happened. Uh, but um, it was just um, something that um, I, uh, you know, I write um, about my experiences, you know. Um, and, and that's basically where those things came from. I was a bit unlucky because um, the boys started without me. Is that right? So, yeah, the, uh, when they started rehearsing this album. And so therefore, Mickey Dolan's has got um, um, a lot more tunes on it than I do. Um, they're very good tunes but uh, no better than the tunes that are going to be coming for the next album from me and Peter and, and Mike as well. You'll notice Mike's only got one other tune on. Yeah, I was curious. Is there any reason Mike only chose to sing on one song and a Monkey's remake of that? Well, he, that's his choice. You know, he, he's not been known over the last years for his vocal, and he was never really known for his vocal. He's been known better as a songwriter, and I pro suppose he was trying to protect that once again, you know. He is committed to the Monkey's, but not 100%, it would seem, from this album. Yeah, it seems to me that from the press I read, first Mike was going to do the tour, but then he had the PBS lawsuit. Then he said he was busy, then this and that. He well, you know, we will find out. We're going into rehearsals on the 21st of October, uh -huh. and we're going to be hopefully um, playing, and you will be invited on the, um, let me see now, I believe it's the, um, uh, what date would that be? On the 18th of November. Right. We are going to um, um, invite some special people okay. to invite it okay. on the 18th of November in New York at a, at a, a club called Tramp. Tramp. And we are going to be uh, playing, uh, you know, four songs from the album and maybe some monkey tunes too. Four of and you? talking to press. Yeah, just the four of us. Oh, excellent. So, um... That's only 80 miles away. I'm real close to New York. Cool. I have a home in Pennsylvania too, you know. Yeah, you live in Beaverton? Yeah, Beaver Town. I'm out in Phoenix, though. Are you familiar with this area? No, I'm about... I'm in between State College and Sealands Grove okay. on 5, 522. On oh, 520 or 522. Yeah, I'm kind of near Pottstown and Allentown. And yeah, well, I'm a bit further away from that. I'm, I'm, I'm between Sealands Grove and Lewistown. Dallow, Pennsylvania. There so have a look at that. Sealands Grove and Lewistown on the 522. It's called Beavertown. Very small place. have a nice place. It's got horses. I enjoy it very much there. But I'm just locating myself out here for a couple of months so I can see the boys actually. Um, were any songs left off the record that you guys made? I actually did one song um, uh, that didn't hit the, the record. It's a song that I wrote called Manchester Boy. Manchester Boy, is that and, autobiographical? Yeah, very much so. Um, during the course of the uh, recording of it, an old friend of mine came from Australia and uh, we talked about it and he said, Wow, at last we've got our tune going. I said, Well, what do you mean? <laughs> he said, Well, we wrote that together. Yeah. I said, well, What? And I've been playing it for the last 25 years and saying, here's a song I wrote called Manchester Boy. Um, I guess he must have been in the room at the time and threw a lyric at me. I have absolutely no recollection of him writing any part of it. So the last minute, because there wasn't supposed to be any more than, well, it could be 12, 13, it doesn't matter, 14 on the CD. But I said, because we want this to be only our own work, I'm going to pull this too. Which was kind of silly in a way, because I would have had another public tune on the album, but uh, it would have been half somebody else's. And so, I pulled it, and it'll be for another day. It'll be for another day. Uh, back to It's Not Too Late, Davey, I think that's one of your strongest songs. On the album, On the album. I, I think it's a really, it's a great way to end the record. Yeah, well, I never knew about the, the order. I've just been given the, uh, uh, the tape myself, the CD that you have. Right, I just have the promo. I don't have the liners or anything. Yeah, well, and I have the, 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 the um, I have the liners and everything else. Uh -huh. I've just been given that, all right. Um, um, I don't... But it, it's not too late, it, it's... One thing about the song, I know Mickey went through a divorce as well. Um, it's my life, what a great tune. Yeah, and, and never enough, especially never enough, there's this feeling of, of resentment and anger, you know? Well, yes, yeah. and, 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 and it's sort of like um, the same with Admiral Mike, you know? Right. Um, that's sort of like knocking the business in a way and, and the whole advertising campaign that they put into us and, and to, to other artists, you know? And it was a very hard thing for Rhino to even uh, um, um, accommodate that kind of lyric. Really? But they've got to understand that, you know, we're 50-year-old men, mm -hmm. and we have all kinds of feelings and emotions that cannot be 
voice publicly from time to time, but you must do these things, you know, through your music or whatever, but do your writing. You know, I'm writing an amazing amount of stuff at this time. Mm -hmm. I am writing so much. I've got a brand new book coming out. Right, it's called They Made a Monkey Out of Me Again, I think. Again, yeah, we've right. just done it. We've added new words. We've added new, new, um, I'll send you a flyer on it, okay? Yeah, please. Um, we, we've added all kinds of, um, you know, pictures and stuff to it, you know, so, but I'm writing otherwise, lots of other stuff. I'm writing 30, 40 pages a day at this point, just on life and on general ideas and, and, and stuff, so I'm very happy with that part of my life. Is there any reason why you're, you're writing so much now? Is there anything that, that kicked it in or did you just feel... It's a case of time, you know? I mean, you're very... I find when I've been, spent a lot of time in England over the last few years, and England consumes me and it, it overwhelms me with responsibilities so you and children and, 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 and marriage and all those things and, and you read through the you know the times of, of, of our lives and, 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 and the past and you read about the artists whether they painters or whether it was the musicians or otherwise all troubled with turmoil throughout their minds and their right. lives right. you know from Brendan Bean dying as a 33 year old poet drunk in an Irish pub you know yeah, oh yeah. to uh, Van Gogh come cutting off his ear you know mm -hmm. Uh, where it might be, we're all very basically on the edge, you know, and that, looking for that artistic um, um, uh, avenue uh, of unknown that we, we, we search for. Right, it's Some people just have it flow and it comes out and they just generally do it, and they, you know, yeah. and they just walk from one idea to another. Yeah, the edge is what brings out artists. Think, yeah, or Barbara Cartland or, or any of those other writers, you know, yeah. they just spew it out one book after another. Well, it's, it's kind of interesting, but, it's, you know, you can't base this interview on an interview you had with somebody else. Absolutely. You've got to take in what I've said and understand what you've, um, um, you know, what you've already uh, appreciated about the monkeys, and now you, you're into a new dimension. Yeah. Absolutely. I, mean, I know we only have a few more minutes, so let me just get a couple other questions to Davey. About your solo stuff and things outside of the monkeys, I know recently you were in Philly, I think, actually. Or maybe you weren't in Philly, but you did Greece. Yeah. Um, I know you toured with Greece. So do you have any plans to solo away from the monkeys you'd like me to mention? Anything you want me to plan? No, just the book, and also, um, obviously, I have, um, um, you know, I'm, I'm not being requested all the time to do certain bits and pieces on TV. Um, I, I probably will be hopefully shooting an episode, although it's not good to talk about because it's not even been done and it's not confirmed, but you know, The Single Guy, okay. which is a TV show. Right. I try to shy away from, from sitcoms, but it's good advertisement, and if we can get um, a little plug in the end of it saying that the monkey's got a new album, mm -hmm. then it's all worth it, you know? It's worth spending a week on the set, you know, waiting to, to go on and say 16 lines, you know? Are you guys going to be doing any TV appearances before you? Um, we want to limit our uh, publicity campaign to um, um, just basic um, sort of um, uh, paper interview, and uh, we're not sure about the TV situation. There's many, many offers all the way down the line from every talk show in town to, to uh, the higher profile, um, um, legitimate sort of interview program. Yeah, I've heard even about a movie. We have a movie been talked about. Um, uh, my title would be The Monkey Save the World. Oh, there you go. There you <laughs> and, go. And um, it's going to be hopefully something that's going to be incorporating our old style with, with what's happening today. Much like a Wayne's World or a Ghostbusters, you know, that kind of idea.